Welcome back to the deep dive. Today, we're going to be exploring a new way to approach investing. It's called the pragmatic asset allocation model. And it's all about, you know, getting those great returns while keeping risk in check. Yeah. And it's designed for, you know, folks who want to be smart with their money, but don't necessarily have the time or frankly, the desire to be glued to the market 24 seven. Yeah, makes sense. This model really tackles a common problem with something called global tactical asset allocation or GTAA. Okay. And most GTAA strategies want you to rebalance constantly, like weekly or even monthly. It can be a real time suck. Yeah. Not really realistic for people with, you know, jobs, families, lives. Right. So this paper is aiming to make GTAA more doable by only rebalancing quarterly with each investment held for at least 12 months. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Okay, I'm already intrigued. Where did the authors get the inspiration for this? Well, they pulled from some pretty classic investing strategies, GTAA, of course, yeah. momentum investing, mm -hmm. and then those strategies that are you know, designed to protect you when the market kind of takes a downturn. Mm -hmm. And they've taken basically the best of all these worlds, added some unique twists of their own things, like tranching, and they even factored in how to maximize your tax benefits. Tranching, that sounds a little intimidating. Can you break it down for me? Absolutely. So imagine slicing your portfolio into four equal parts or tranches. Okay. Now you rebalance each tranche just once a year, but here's the clever part. They're staggered. So you're actually making adjustments to your overall portfolio every quarter, Right. but still keeping each investment for that full 12 months, which can be handy, especially when it comes to taxes. Right. A lot of countries have lower tax rates for long-term capital gains. Yeah, definitely. So it's a smooth move for both simplicity and your strategy. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's talk about the specific investment they recommend. Okay. So for the risky assets, they've got the NASDAQ 100, the MSCI World Index, and the MSCI Emerging Markets Index. So we've got, you know, tech heavy growth stocks, broad global market representation, yep. and some potential, you know, high growth plays in the emerging markets. That's right. What about the safer option, those, you know, hedging assets? Well, for hedging, they go with 10-year U.S. Treasury bonds and gold. So I'm seeing a theme here, diversification without overcomplicating things. That's right. But why these specific assets? Why not throw in, like, real estate or commodities? Well, that's where the pragmatic approach really shines through. They deliberately chose assets that are easy to understand, widely accessible, proven performers over time. Okay. They argue that while you could include other asset classes, it might add a lot more complexity without really improving your returns all that much. Okay. So no need to get a PhD in finance to manage this portfolio. Yeah. Keep it simple. But let's get down to business. How does this model actually tell you what to buy and when? Right. Well, their strategy unfolds in six steps, each uh -huh. one building on the last. Okay. It's quite systematic. I do love a good framework. Good. Hit me with step one. Step one focuses on momentum. So they look at their three risky assets and they pick the top two performers based on how they've done over the past 12 months. So are we talking about like simply chasing the hottest stocks? Not exactly. Step two adds a trend filter to make sure <laughs> we're not just jumping on a fleeting bandwagon. Okay, so not just blindly following past performance. Right, right. Tell me more about this trend filter. Yeah, so they only invest in assets that are demonstrably trending upwards, mm -hmm. meaning the current price is higher than the average price over the past 12 months. So think of it as looking for consistent upward movement, okay. not just a quick blip. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, what's step three? Step three introduces an element that might surprise you cash. Cash. Yeah. You're telling me that even in a strategy designed to outperform the market, there's a place for good old cash. You bet. Sometimes the smartest move is to simply stay on the sidelines. Hmm. 
So the model allocates a portion of the portfolio to cash when market conditions aren't looking so hot. Okay. For instance, if two out of the three risky assets are trending downwards. So it's not just about picking winners. It's about knowing when to protect your capital. Exactly. Okay, I can see the wisdom in that. What comes next? Step four utilizes the yield curve as a signal to potentially move entirely into cash during, you know, periods of economic uncertainty. The yield curve. Yeah. I have to admit, that one always makes my head spin a little. Sure, it can be confusing. Can you give me a quick ELL I5 version? Of course. So imagine a line graph where the further you go to the right, the longer the time period. Now plot the interest rates for bonds of different durations on this graph. Okay. When short-term interest rates are higher than long-term rates, the line slopes downwards, and that's called an inverted yield curve. Right. And it often signals a potential recession. Interesting. So if the yield curve inverts, this model says, time to batten down the hatches and move everything to cash. Exactly. It's a potential way to avoid getting caught in a major market downturn. Smart. But they don't stop there. Okay. Step five adds another layer of protection with a hedging portfolio. I'm seeing a pattern here. Yeah. Momentum and trend for growth, cash and hedging for protection. So what's in this hedging portfolio? This one's pretty straightforward. It's just gold. And those 10-year U.S. Treasury bonds we talked about earlier, sure. these assets tend to do well when the market takes a hit. Yeah. Think of it as like an insurance policy for your portfolio. Okay. What's the final step? Step six is all about damage control, and it involves using a stop-loss mechanism. I need a quick refresher. Sure. What's a stop-loss order again? Yeah, it's an order you place with your broker to automatically sell an asset when it drops to a certain price. Okay. Like setting a safety net to limit your losses. So if one of their chosen assets starts tanking, the stop loss kicks in and prevents things from getting too ugly. You got it. And they've cleverly integrated this stop loss mechanism into their quarterly rebalancing schedule yeah. to minimize any negative tax consequences. It's fascinating how these six steps work together to create this, you know, balanced and strategic approach. So we talked about the problem this model addresses, mm -hmm. the inspiration behind it, specific assets, and the core steps of the strategy. Well, next up is the really exciting part, the performance data. Did this model actually deliver? It absolutely did. Their back testing showed this pragmatic asset allocation model earned an average annual return of 10.73% with a sharp ratio of 0.93. Okay, I'm seeing this sharp ratio of 0.93. Now, I know this is a key metric for measuring risk-adjusted returns. Right. But I'm always a bit fuzzy on what a good number is. Can you break it down for me and for our listeners in plain English? Yeah, a sharp ratio of 0.93 is considered very respectable. Okay. It basically tells us that the model is delivering solid returns without taking on an excessive amount of risk. Right. To put it simply you're getting a good bang for your buck in terms of the reward for the level of risk you're taking on. Gotcha. So they're achieving those strong returns without having to stomach wild swings in their portfolio. That's right. I like that. What about those dreaded drawdowns? You know, the periods where your investments actually lose value. Right. How did the model handle those gut-wrenching times? Well, that's another area where it really shines. The maximum drawdown, meaning the biggest peak to trough decline they observed, was only about 24%. Wow. And remember, this backtesting period spanned almost a century. Yeah, it's a long time. From 1927 to 2023. Wow, that's covering a lot of market history. It is. From the Great Depression to the dot-com bubble and everything in between. To come through all of that with under a 24% drawdown that's is pretty remarkable. That's pretty impressive. Especially considering that this isn't some super complex, high-frequency trading strategy. It's designed for regular folks who want to be smart with their money mm -hmm. without needing a degree in finance. To achieve that level of drawdown control with just quarterly rebalancing is a testament to the strategy's effectiveness. I think so. So just to recap, yeah. we're looking at solid returns, mm -hmm. really good risk-adjusted performance, yeah. and impressive drawdown control. Sounds like this model could be a real game changer. Potentially. But let's not forget the pragmatic part. Sure. What are the practical benefits for everyday investors like our listeners? That's a great point. Yeah. The authors highlight three key benefits. First, as we've already touched on, the reduced rebalancing frequency. Right. 
quarterly adjustments make this strategy manageable for people who, you know, have lives outside of their investment portfolio. Right, exactly. Absolutely. No one wants to feel like they need to be constantly checking stock prices and making trades. Yeah. For sure. It's not sustainable for most people. Right. So this quarterly approach lets you set it and forget it. I like that. For three months at a time. Yeah. What's the second benefit? The second one is it's designed with your tax situation in mind. So that 12-month holding period is crucial for qualifying for those favorable long-term capital gains tax rates. Right. Which, as you know, can be significantly lower than short-term rates. That's a huge win. It is. It means you get to keep more of your hard-earned money in your pocket. For sure. All right. What's the third benefit? Third benefit is the historical perspective. Okay. As we mentioned earlier, their back testing covered a very long period. Yeah. From 1927 all the way to 2023. Right. That means they've tested this model across a variety of market conditions. Yeah. Bull markets, bear markets, recessions, you name it. Wars pandemics, whole shebang. To see it consistently perform well through such a tumultuous period gives you a high degree of confidence in its robustness. It does. Yeah. I'm sensing that you're pretty impressed with this pragmatic asset allocation model. I am. I have to admit, I am too. Yeah. It seems like a really solid approach for anyone looking to dip their toes into more active investing without getting, you know, overwhelmed. But before we jump to conclusions, what stood out to you as the most interesting or innovative aspect of this approach? You know what really strikes me is how they've managed to weave together diversification, risk management, and tax optimization into one cohesive strategy. They've really thought through the practical challenges that you know the investors face. I completely agree. Yeah. It's not just about maximizing returns at all costs. Exactly. It's about creating a system that's sustainable, manageable, and helps you achieve your financial goals while also, you know, minimizing risk and maximizing tax efficiency. Absolutely. All important factors. Which of course leads to the big question. Yeah. Could this strategy work for our listeners? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. And the truth is, like any investment strategy, there is no one size fits all answer. Right. It really depends on your individual goals, risk tolerance, time horizon. Right. We always encourage our listeners to do their own research and due diligence before making any investment decisions. Absolutely. This paper is a great starting point, but it's crucial to think about how this model might fit into your own unique financial picture. Of course. For example, what if someone's risk tolerance is much higher or lower than average? Exactly. The authors themselves acknowledge that the specific investment universe they chose. Remember, those three risky assets and two hedging assets might not be the perfect fit for everyone. Yeah. They encourage readers to explore different options and personalize the asset allocation based on their own preferences and goals. So in a way, this model is more like a framework than a rigid set of rules. Exactly. It's about understanding the core principles okay. and tailoring them to your own needs and circumstances. Gotcha. So someone with a higher risk appetite, for instance, might choose to increase their exposure to emerging markets or even add a small allocation to something like Bitcoin, while someone nearing retirement might prefer to tilt their portfolio more towards those safer hedging assets like bonds and gold. So it's like they've given you the blueprints for a house, but you get to decide on the finishes and the decor. That's a great analogy. Now, before we send our listeners off to start building their own personalized pragmatic asset allocation strategy, I want to touch on something the author brought up that I found really insightful. Okay. He talked about the limitations of even the most sophisticated models. Right. He emphasized that no strategy can perfectly predict the future. Of course. And there will always be unexpected events that can throw off even the best laid plans. That's a crucial point to remember, especially in today's world. Where things can change so rapidly. Yeah. No matter how much research you do or how carefully you backtest your strategies, there's always an element of uncertainty. Absolutely. So while it's important to have a well-defined strategy, it's equally important to remain adaptable and prepared to adjust your course as needed. Absolutely. Don't get so attached to the model that you ignore potential warning signs or fail to adapt to changing market conditions. I couldn't agree more. Investing is a journey, not a destination. That's a good way to put it. You've got to be flexible and always ready to learn from new information and adjust your approach accordingly. You know what else I find interesting about this model is it really addresses like the psychological side of investing. Yeah, the mental game can be the toughest part sometimes. Exactly. And this model kind of takes some of the guesswork and the emotion out of it. Right. 
which can be a huge relief. It can. I think that's a key point. It gives you a clear set of rules to follow. So you're less likely to make like impulsive decisions based on fear or greed. Right. We've all been there, right? Seeing the market dip and wanting to sell everything or chasing the latest hot stock tip. Emotions can really sabotage even the most well thought out investment plan. Absolutely. This model encourages you to think long term, stick to your strategy and let the system do its work. It's like having a personal investing coach in your pocket, gently reminding you to stay the course. It provides that much needed guidance and structure, which is especially helpful for people who are new to active investing or who tend to get overwhelmed by all the noise in the market. Speaking of feeling overwhelmed, I think the authors did a fantastic job of making this complex topic accessible to anyone. Yeah. They really demystified a lot of the jargon and concepts that could be intimidating for the average person. For sure, no finance degree required. Exactly. I'd say we've explored this pragmatic asset allocation model from top to bottom, the theory, the mechanics, the potential benefits, and even the psychological aspects. We've seen how it combines momentum investing, trend-following risk management, and tax optimization into a robust and surprisingly adaptable strategy. It is. But... As we've emphasized throughout this deep dive, the most important thing is to take this information and make it your own. That's right. This model is a fantastic framework, but it's not about blindly following someone else's rules. It's about understanding the principles, applying them to your own unique circumstances, and creating an investment strategy that aligns with your goals, your risk tolerance, and your vision for the future. So to our listeners, we've armed you with the knowledge. Now it's time to take charge of your financial journey. Could this strategy work for you? What tweaks would you make to personalize it, keep those brains buzzing? And until next time, happy investing. And thanks for taking the deep dive with us. 